lift up the name of the Lord and bless the King of Kings. Exalt the Lord of Lords. Exalt the Alpha and the Omega. The only wise God, the all-knowing one. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Thank him. Thank him for his mercies that are new every morning. Thank him. Thank him. Bless his name. Exalt him. Magnify him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. We give you praise. We give you praise. I exalt you. I exalt you. I exalt you. You are worthy. You are God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Son of God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. This morning, 
we have just come to say we are grateful. Grateful, 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 grateful. Thank you, 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 thank you. We exalt you, we appreciate you. Thank you for your mercies, thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your provision, thank you for your protection, thank you for your preservation. Thank you for the mountains, thank you for the valleys. Thank you for the rain, thank you for the sun. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be unto your name forever and ever in the name of Jesus. On behalf of our Father in the Lord, that the Kio, Pastor Enoch, and we are saying thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness in this life. Thank you for keeping him. Thank you for helping him. Thank you for hearing him. Thank you for lifting him up, oh God. Glory be unto your name. Thank you for his 80th birthday. Thank you, oh God, for the exalted position you have lifted him to. Glory be unto your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the special Holy Ghost service. Thank you for how it started. Thank you for what you are doing now and where you are going. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this weekend. Thank you for Thursday. Thank you for Friday. Thank you for yesterday. The communion and the anointing service. Thank you. Thank you for the minister's conference, even before the special Holy Ghost service itself. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for bringing us even to the first Sunday in the month of March. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the moments we understand. Thank you for a lot more moments that we don't even understand at all. Thank you because through it all, you have been faithful. That's why we are standing. If you have not been faithful, we would have been gone. Lost. Father, thank you. Please accept our thanks this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, please, our cry this morning is that you give us out of thanksgiving forever, out of rejoicing, out of joy, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody that is victorious. Somebody that has the joy of the Lord. Somebody that is rejoicing. Somebody who's rejoicing will be forever. Somebody who will never know defeat again. Somebody that will never know sorrow again. I want just that person to shout the Lord. seated. Hallelujah. God bless you in the precious name of Jesus. Our victory is permanent and is forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to please turn our Bibles this morning to First Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1, we read verses 15 to 18, verses 15 to 18, and then we read 26 to 28, and then we add one extra verse 
chapter 2 verse 1 because chapter 1 ends um, at um, 28 but I want us to take that chapter 2 just the verse 1 of it so we are reading 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 15 to 18 and 26 to 28 then chapter 2 verse 1 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 15. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord. I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaints and grief have I spoken, eat her too. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel, grant thee thy petition that thou had asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did it. And her countenance was no more sad. Verse 26. First Samuel chapter 1, 26 now. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord for this child I prayed and the Lord had given me my petition which I asked of him 28 therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Chapter 2 and verse 1. And Anna prayed and said, my heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My arm is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. This morning, we are looking at the subject, the mystery of genuine sacrificial thanksgiving. The mystery of genuine sacrificial thanksgiving. What's thanksgiving? 
is the act of showing gratitude and appreciation to someone because of having obtained a favor from that person is an act of showing gratitude and appreciation because I have obtained favor from the person. Either an act that is done or even a disposition. If somebody is favorably disposed to me, it's enough for me to say thank you. So that's thanksgiving. What is sacrifice? Because we are looking at the subject, the mystery of genuine sacrificial thanks given. Thanks given, but it's also sacrificial. And it's also genuine. And we are saying that it produces mysteries. So what sacrifice is the act of giving up something precious in honor of someone or something. in anticipation of a better return. Sacrifice is the act of giving up something that is precious in honor of someone or something in anticipation of a better Return. In Second Samuel chapter twenty-four and verse twenty-four, there was plague in the land during the time of David, and people were dying, strange deaths, and David cried to God, and God said, "Go and offer me a sacrifice." And God told him where. So he went to the place, to a land that belonged to a man called Aruana. I said, Aruana, please can I have your land for a fee so that I can offer sacrifice to God? And so Aruana said to him, Ah, it's an honor to have the king come and ask for my land. Take the land. Take all the animals on the land. I give you free. David said, God forbid. I'm not going to offer God an offering that will cost me nothing. God forbid. <laughs> it's not a sacrifice if it's not costing me anything. And so David said, tell me the full price. I will pay everything. It must cost me something. So sacrifice is an act of giving up something that is valuable, precious, in anticipation for a better return. So when we say genuine sacrificial thanksgiving, then he's saying that our thanksgiving must cost us something. Our thanksgiving must be heavy. The elders have an adage. Say the person that is favored but fails to show appreciation 
is like an armed robber. The person that is favored but refuse to show appreciation is like an armed robber. Also correct. As humans, we thank, we thank sometimes. And then the other times, you and I, we say to ourselves, what am I thanking for? Why should I thank when nothing is working? When things seem to be going backward? When I seem to be making losses? So why should I thank? All of us do it. That's why all of us, as we're growing up, we were taught and we keep teaching our children also. When they give you something, what do you say? Say thank you. Because naturally, the child doesn't want to say thank you. Is it not my dad? Should you not give it to me? So why should I say thank you? Is it not my right? I should God not wake me up every day. Is it not my right to live? So as humans, we find it difficult to say thanksgiving a number of times, plenty of times. It may surprise you that even in seasons when things are going well, when there is plenty, when there is lifting, sometimes, many a times, what we call thanksgiving, often they are not thanksgiving. Often they are using style to show up. And God sees into every heart. He sees the motive of every person. We thank the Lord for our Father and the Lord truly. And we are thanking God for such a man. All of us are so proud of him. He has not brought shame to us. I mean, you can't go anywhere and say as a member of Redeem, you are ashamed to talk about that. Did you never? We are all proud to be associated with him. And we thank God forever for his life. He's such an example to us in almost all ways. And thank God, God had made him 80. Hallelujah! Somebody give God thanks for Daddy Gio! for his life. He's 80 years old. And we are praying that God will have more. But I'm saying that even in times of plenty for you and I, many a times, what we call thanksgiving is not thanksgiving. But showing up is time. Yes, somehow we are saying thank you. But there's something in us, in me, in you, that also say, let them know. I don't land. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It's okay, but God wants us to give him all the thanks. All the praise. All the adoration. And that's why we are talking about sacrificial thanksgiving. Because something in you, you know, we say it even here, yeah, particularly about PICP. So when we are giving testimony, I mean, testimony glorifies God. But then sometimes when we give our testimony, I prayed, I fasted, as if it's you, your prayers, your fasting that did it. I know it's true that you fasted. It's true that I prayed. But am I giving the glory to myself because I was able to fast? Or am I giving the glory to God that did it? And that's what I mean by sacrificial thanksgiving. Where you and I are out of the equation. Where it's absolutely about him. Now imagine this. He 
if it's difficult and sometimes delicate to give thanks, even when things are going well, even when doors are opening and they are lifting, what then happens when things are not going well? What then happens when things are not working? And that's why we are talking about the mystery of sacrificial thanks given. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 is a scripture that all of us knows. First Thessalonians 5 verse 18 it says in everything give thanks. Who said that what? God. In how many things? Everything. 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 Ah. Is that possible? Of course it is possible. Is it easy? Definitely not. Definitely not. I may give thanks when things are good. And I need to even be careful that I'm giving thanks and I'm not showing off. When there's promotion, when doors are opening, when marriages are opening, when my prayers are being answered. See, there are some things you and I cannot hide. If I'm not fine, I can hide it. I can keep a straight face and say, God bless you, God bless you. But I'm pain inside of me. But if I'm happy, I can't hide it too. <laughs> I cannot hide it. Even if I don't, nothing about me will brighten up. Praise the name of the Lord. So, God says, in all things, in everything, we should give thanks. God, how can you ask this kind of demand? Because life is ups and down. No matter the victory, the breakthrough you have, one challenge will still come. One battle will still attempt to come. And then you just wonder, why am I even here at all? But God says, in everything, in everything, you have just suffered defeat, give thanks. You've just suffered the loss, give thanks. Ha! Huh? You've just lost someone, give thanks. when things are not fine. But God says, give thanks at all times. 
And we are saying, are there things that God knows that has made this Thanksgiving so critical in the equation of our lives? Praise the name of the Lord. When we look at the Bible passage that we read about Anna, she was in a bad situation. She had been married for years, no child. Bad enough, but let's even leave that. Unfortunately, the husband had two wives, Anna and Penina. Even if she had no child, bad enough. But every day, Penina without her life, and mock her, and abuse her, and the Bible said it was so bad that she would fret. She would feel like committing suicide. <laughs> We're told about David in First Samuel chapter twenty-five. Things were so rough at one time of his life. He went to beg the man called Nabal for food, and Nabal abused him. That he felt like committing murder. That he said, hey, you so abuse me, abuse my father, abuse my mother, abuse everything. I will kill you, I will kill everything about you. But thank God God intervened. We're told that things were so bad for Anna that not only the child that she didn't have, the mockery by the enemy, the intimidation. And then the husband will come, and I love you. And the husband will give her money, we give her gifts. And they meant nothing to Anna. Because she was in pain and bitterness of soul. And we're told according to that first Samuel chapter 1, she went to the temple on a day like this. She was pain. As a matter of fact, she ran from the house because the mockery was too much. The abuse was too much. The pain, the weight was too much. And she ran and just fell before the Lord. And she began to weep before the Lord. And began to pour her heart before the Lord. And she was weeping and crying before the Lord. To the extent that when the high priest saw her, said this woman must be drunk. And she said, I'm not drunk from where we started reading. That I'm pouring out the bitterness of my heart to God. And the man of God said, may God grant you your petition. And then we read, months later, not even before we get there, we were told from that moment that she cried her heart before God, that she was no longer sad. She was no longer sad. Nothing has changed. The people that were abusing her, they have not died. They have not changed in their disposition. Nothing has changed. But she began to rejoice from that day. Before then, we were told that she was so battered that she couldn't eat. She began to eat. She began to rejoice. And then nine months later, she began to celebrate. I don't know how you have come this morning. I don't know what seems not to be working. Even as Anna had an encounter with the Lord, I pray for you and I pray for myself. That you will touch God this morning in the name of Jesus and because from his presence flows joy unspeakable that joy will flow into your life this morning and will swallow every pain and shame and defeat and sorrow in the name of Jesus Christ and nine months Samuel came and then after a few months, she took Samuel 
back to the temple. So this is a child that asks for God. I lend him back to God. I give him back to God. I asked him in sacrifice because I was weeping. I was crying. I was in tears. But I sacrificed my tears. I sacrificed my bitterness, my pain, my heart. I laid them down at the feet of the Lord. I sacrificed it. I took his joy. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. As I sacrificed my pain and bitterness and defeat and sorrow, I took his joy. I took Samuel also. So now I understand what made it to work. is a sacrifice. I am giving him back again to God. I am giving another sacrifice. It's not only at that time when I gave the sacrifice of my pain, of my tears, of my sorrow, even in my abundance, even in my plenty, I am sacrificing it also. And by the time we get to 1 Samuel chapter 2, she had become a mother of five. Somebody here this morning, even as you and I begin to genuinely offer sacrificial thanksgiving, the story will change for you. In the name of Jesus. So I said, is there something that God knows about sacrificial thanksgiving that made him to tell us that in all things give thanks? Definitely. Definitely. And we saw those things in the life of Hannah. Because number one, why sacrificial thanksgiving genuine is important to God is because it acknowledges and declares the sovereignty of God. Genuine thanksgiving, genuine sacrificial thanksgiving is simply saying it doesn't matter what is happening. God, you are sovereign. Psalm 115, verse 3. Psalm 115, verse 3. Said, Our God is in the heaven. He does whatsoever He pleases. So it doesn't matter. Ups, down, you are sovereign. That's what Genesis Thanksgiving is saying. He's saying, it's not about you. It's not about what you feel. It's not about what is happening to you or what is not happening to you. It's about God. That's what is declaring. So no matter the situation, give thanks genuinely because it's declaring that God, you are sovereign. When you and I give genuine and sacrificial thanksgiving, we are also declaring the superior wisdom of God. The superior wisdom of God is being declared with our genuine sacrificial thanksgiving. If things are not working well, why should I give thanks? But as I am giving thanks in spite of all the hearts, what I'm saying is, God knows what he's doing. What I'm saying is, everything will work out in my favor. What I'm saying is, God is at work. The wisdom of God is at work. Praise the name of the Lord. Job said, even if he smites me, I will yet trust him. He's at work. His superior wisdom is at work. Praise the name of the Lord. When you and I thank God sacrificially, 
genuinely, whether in plenty, whether in scarcity. What he's saying is, God, I'm not alone in this. You are involved. You are involved. No matter how bad the things may be, no matter how much you are mocking me, God, you are part of this. That's my declaration. You are part of this. You are part of this. And then let's see, like Pastor Stodivan said, that daddy said, we will see what we will see. <laughs> then let us see if God is truly involved. Let us see what the outcome will be. We shall see what we shall see. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when I give thanks genuinely, irrespective of what I may be facing, whether I've just received a sack letter, it does not matter. I'm saying, God, I still thank you. Is it easy? Definitely not. A sacrifice, yes, a sacrifice. But it produces mystery. Praise the name of the Lord. When you look at the life of Anna, clearly we see the mysteries of genuine sacrificial thanksgiving. First, in the life of Anna, that day, after she cried to God, and she touched God, we're told that she was no longer sad. She began to rejoice. She hasn't seen anything yet, but she began to rejoice. So the first thing that we see there is, Jenny, sacrificial thanksgiving, he puts an end to negative trends. He arrests it. Because before that day, every time she was sick, she was crying, she was weeping, she felt like committing suicide, that was the end of all those satanic oppression. Because she suddenly began to thank the Lord. Is it? No, but in sacrifice. It's an exchange. The burdens are there, the pains are there, but Lord, I exchange it. I exchange it, I lay them down, and I give you all the praise. You are far better than all of this. That's what he said. He puts an end to a negative trend. I declare over your life and over my life, Every negative pattern and trend, they end now. They end now. They end now. And forever. In the name of Jesus. It puts an end to satanic mysteries. Satanic mysteries. See the negative trend where the things that she was facing physically. They were harassing her. There was no child. But it ended. But then there was also a satanic mystery. Nobody could explain what was happening. She was a good woman. She loved the Lord. Every year she kept going to Shiloh. She kept praying. She kept fasting. But nothing was happening. It was a mystery. Are there people here this morning? You have done everything you think you should do. You've gone everywhere you think you should go, but nothing is happening. But things may even seem to be getting worse. Sometimes there are mysteries at work. Things that defile all explanation and understanding. But as Hannah began to thank the Lord, genuinely, even though things have not changed, those satanic mysteries were swallowed up. I speak into your life. Every satanic mystery, Every strange occurrence in your life that you can't explain, that you have battled and battled and battled, but it seems to be abounding. They end now, 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 in the name of Jesus. As Anna began to give sacrificial thanksgiving, the tide turned against her enemy. The tide turned against our enemy. By the time you read that first Samuel chapter 2, 
Anna herself said, he said, the strong has become weak. And the one that is called feeble and called barren has given birth to five. The tide turned. Suddenly, the one that had the upper, upper edge, it went down. Hannah herself said, now my mouth is enlarged against the mouth of my enemies. Praise the name of the Lord. As she began to offer sacrificial thanksgiving, the tide turned against the enemy. As she began to offer sacrificial thanksgiving, and as we also begin to offer genuine sacrificial thanksgiving, it brings an end to every plague of the enemy. It brings an end to every plague. We see that in the life of David, in that second Samuel chapter 24, there was plague, mysterious death in the family, in the city. David said, I will never offer that which will not cost me anything. And as David began to offer thanksgiving, every satanic plague, they vanished. Every plague over your family, over your habitation, wherever you are walking, wherever you have been assigned, but there seems to be satanic plague just causing things to fall apart in the name that is above all names. They end, they disappear in the name of Jesus. Sons and mass. As Anna began to thank the Lord sacrificially, not only did God give her Samuel, Samuel became the greatest prophet of his time. Whenever Samuel was entering any city, people began to panic. God did not just give her a son, God gave her the best. What are we saying? As we begin to offer genuine, Sacrificial thanksgiving. God makes sure the seed does not only end, that it ends permanently. So it wasn't that Anna just had Samuel, and that was the end. She kept having more children until she said, eh, It's enough. Until she said, It's enough. She kept having children. The tide kept turning and turning and turning. And it was from one level of glory to another. This is why we say that genuine sacrificial thanksgiving, it works mystery. It's deeper than what we can explain. That's why God said, in all things, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. And as we conclude this morning, as we conclude this morning, I'm sure that one or two things we can learn from Anna. How can I plug in to genuine sacrificial thanksgiving? How did Anna plug into it? One moment everything was upside down. One moment she kept losing. One moment she kept like committing suicide. And then the next hour, things have started changing. The first thing that Anna did, which I'm begging every one of us to do, is that Anna touched the Lord. Anna touched the Lord. Or maybe I will put it this way. The Lord touched Anna. Anna touched the Lord. The Lord touched Anna. I can come to church. I can sing. I can pray. But I'm not touching God. As a matter of fact, the prophet Eli, he thought she was drunk. She, but she touched God. If you and I are going to touch God, we are going to take off the clock of hypocrisy. We are going to come to the Lord honest and open. Not in pretense. Lord, I'm not happy. But you are still good. Lord, I'm paying. But you are still faithful. That's what she was saying. She 
she touched the Lord. She poured out her heart. She told the Lord exactly the way she The prophet was there. She didn't even go to the Eli. She went to God. She touched God. God touched her. Sars and Mars, when you and I touch God, when you and I touch God, that's the beginning of genuine thanksgiving. Like you have been told, the joy of the Lord is my strength. How can I receive his strength if I won't make contact with him? When I touch him and he touches me, the tide will just begin to turn in your favor and in my favor. So touch God. Open up to God. Number two. The prophet said to Anna, Eli said to Anna, say be it unto you as you have asked me. God grant your petition. And she held on to the word of God. Grabbed it. Began to rejoice. Thank you. Thank you. That's even when she came back to give thanks. He said, my Lord, remember that word you spoke to me? I held on to it. See the result. Giving thanks genuinely and sacrificially. Hold on to God's promise. Take his promise and begin to thank him for his promise. How about things are not working? Forget about things. Take his promise. Take his promise. Take his promise. How about things are going down? Take his promise. Take his promise. Take his promise. But this is the doctor's report. Take God's report. Take God's report. And begin to thank him for his report irrespective of how you feel. Irrespective of what you see. And that's why we said it's sacrifice. Because you are seeing something else. When you say, Lord, I choose to thank you for your promise. What else must we do? Thank him for little things. Things that look like nothing. Thank him for them. Ah. And you don't have a house. <laughs> but you still, if you didn't tell any person, nobody will know. You are still living. You are still wearing clothes. You didn't come to church empty, naked. Thank him for the little things. And then, finally, make thanksgiving your lifestyle. Because when Anna came back, he said, this thing worked for me, and I'm doing it again. I gave thanks, I gave my pain, in my lowness, when I had nothing, I gave my pain, I gave everything, now I have, even what I have, I'm giving. Even what I have, I give it. Until today, we are still singing the song of Hannah. There is none only as the Lord, as the Lord. There is none. Besides thee, neither is there at any rock, any rock like, like God. our God. There is no oh, oh, holy as the Lord, holy as the Lord. There is no. Please, I like you to. 
lift up our voices and let's thank the Lord for those little things. You call them little. You call them little. You sleep, you wake up, you call it little. If you don't wake up, can you do other things? Can you do other things? You call them little. You are clothes. You are clothes. You call it little. You call it little. Let the clothes be taken off you and see what becomes of you. You call it little. You call it little. You walked in to touch this money. You were not carried. You called it little. You call it little. Let that finger, just one finger, begin to ache you. Just one finger. You will not sleep. You will go to doctors. You call it little. You call it little. Thank you for those little things. You can breathe. You can smell. You call it little. You can lift up your hands. You call it little. You can see. You call it little. You call it little. Thank you. Thank you. You have a job. You say it's not a good job. But you have one. There are so many don't even have any. You call it little. You call it little. You are married. You call it little. You call it little. Thank you. Thank you for the little thing. Oh, you say you have only 1,000 in your account. You call it little. You call it little. There are some they don't even have nothing. There are some they have not eaten for days. Thank you for what you call little things. Little kata kata. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God says, in all things, give thanks. In all things, give thanks. You know one of the reasons why? Because no matter how bad the situation may be, <laughs> no matter how terrible the situation may be, God has already made the way of escape. It's not that he's going to make it. In Daniel chapter 3, the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire. It was not after they were thrown into the fire. God began to say, what are we going to do? Because we were told that even the people that threw them into fire, the fire finished them. The fire that finished the people that threw them into fire, as they were being thrown, they would have been finished. As they were being thrown, the fire that finished those that threw them, they would have been finished. But God had already designed the way of escape before the trouble started. I don't care what you may be facing. I don't care what the challenge may be. He has already designed the escape route. You may not see it is a different case. That you don't see does not mean it does not exist. So lift up your voice today. And thank the Lord because he has already made the way of escape. Whether you see it or not does not matter. He has already made the way. It's an act of faith. Lord, I believe you. No matter what is confronting me, you have already made the way. To see beyond what I'm seeing, I choose to thank you because before the problem started, you have been there, you have made the way before the problem started, before the enemy began to throw javelins and began to win blockages. You have already made the way of escape. So, Lord, I'm thanking you already because you have already made the way. Akato Sokata, Mekapa Kata Kata Gose. Glory, hallelujah. Matatanda, Matasia, Ikadu.
also in Jesus might say name we give thanks I want us to thank the Lord again because we see in the life of Anna after she touched God we were told she began to rejoice things are not changed physically but she began to rejoice but nine months afterwards she continued rejoicing she continued and continued and continued Praise the name of the Lord. And we saw in our life that every negative circle ended. Every satanic mystery ended. Every plague ended. Every advantage of the enemy ended. It's possible you haven't seen anything. But with all what God has done for us this weekend, ah, lift up your voice. And begin to thank the Lord because every negative thing has ended in your life. Anna did not see anything change physically, but she began to thank the Lord. Anna did not see anything change physically, but in the spirit realm, things have changed. Lift up your voice and begin to thank the Lord. Things have changed. The plague is ended in the name of Jesus. The negative trend is arrested. Gadosha, Makapapa, Gragadaba, Bosote Kalabranda, Mapapa Kataya, Ketoso, Bragada. Thank you, Lord. Mate Kalaba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Makopranda, Mekalabregalabados, Mate Kalabragalabado. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. And then finally this morning, we want to cry to God. We want to touch him. We want to touch him. If only you and I can touch God. It's possible I preach and I still don't touch God. It's possible I come to church, but I still don't touch God. So we're going to cry. That whatsoever is covering us. I mean, like you and I know electricity. Cables of the fan, for example, that is all over here. If we touch it, no, okay, no electricity will shock the person. Why? Because it's shielded. But inside, the currents are flowing. So whatsoever may be the shield, that will not let us touch God. Or will not let God touch us. That it will be removed today. But before we pray that prayer, if you are here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus. You can start. You can start your new sacrificial thanksgiving. You cannot. You have to come naked to God. Like Anna. Anna came. She opened up herself to God. She became sincere to God. She was not hiding anything to the extent that the prophet thought she was strong. But she opened up to God. Suddenly, all the prayers she had been praying before, I don't know what happened. That seems not to be getting to God. Suddenly, because she was open, the thing flowed to God. Suddenly, instantly, the answer flowed back. So you are here this morning. You have not given your life to Jesus. You have been insulated. Things are standing as barrier between you and God. So this morning, you want to be honest with God. You want to be open to God. You want to be sincere to your maker. It's not to any man. I like to pray with you before all of us begin to cry to God. I like you to lift up your hand. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. You want to mean business with your God. You want to be open to him. You want to be naked before him. You don't want to live in deceit any longer with your maker. i like to pray with you this morning. So wherever you are, please just lift up your hand so that we can pray together. So that we can pray together. You are here this morning. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I don't want to be insulated. Sin is insulating my life. I don't want to be insulated any longer. And I'm surrendering to you. So I'd like to pray with you. Just lift up your hand 
so that we can pray together this morning. Are you lifting up that and lift it up, brother? Lift it up properly to the Lord, not unto any man, unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, unto the Lord, unto the Lord. And, and the rest of us, I want all of us to cry to the Lord this morning. Lord, this morning I want to touch you. Lord, this morning I want you to touch me. Lord, this morning I want to touch you. Lord, this morning I want you to touch me. I don't just want to come to church. I want to touch you. And I touched you. Lord, I've been coming to church for months now. For years now. I cannot remember the last time I had your touch. I cannot remember the last time I touched you. I cannot remember the last time you touched me. Lord, this morning, every insulator in my life, every habit, every behavior, oh God, every unbelief, every fear, every unforgiveness that is shielding me, even from you, that is shielding you, even from me, Lord, take it away. Lord, let me touch you this morning. Let me touch you with my heart. Let me touch you with my thanksgiving this morning. Let me touch you with my petition. Let me touch you with my prayers. Marco Bragadose. Kadala Badoso. Bragadoso. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, this morning we thank you. Then is the power and the glory and the majesty and the kingdom and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, this morning, help us to touch you. Lord, Anna came in bitterness of earth. Lord, we come, whichever way we are, we come before you this morning with our ups, with our downs, with our fears, with our anxieties, with our appointments, with our disappointments. We come before you, O God. Father, we ask, O God, cleanse us with your blood. Every insulator, everything standing between us and you. Lord, let your mercy take them out of the way. Father, this morning, let us touch you. Let us touch your presence. Oh God, touch us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Let us touch you with our thanksgiving. Even our sacrificial, our genuine thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus. Let every negative train be arrested. Let every plague be arrested. Let every advantage of the enemy be overturned. Let every satanic mysteries be overturned. In the name of Jesus. Let every negative circle of defeat of loss. Let them be ended now. In the name of Jesus. Let there be lifting up. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be rejoicing. Let there be testimonies. Let there be breakthroughs. Let your name be glorified. And let the thanksgiving begin. And let the celebration begin. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 